Thank you very much à on Solomon et Sana for that uh, piece of musical education and it is being composed by Sultan Sh Oshimi. Thank you very much à uh, on uh, Solomon for that music. If you are just tuning in, the program is uh, Topics and Realities coming to you from Royal 88.4 FM. We already have some guests who are here with us in the studio. We are still waiting for at least two others that will be joining us uh, this evening. Uh, let me first of all begin with uh john niba good afternoon to you thank you ebel bella samari and good afternoon to ebel and all listeners <laughs> of topics and realities on royal fm 98.4 and a special greetings to the reverend pastor emmanuel Noel beside the promoter of this house and which many we, other things which we want to see happy anniversary i really for, long to meet uh, okay it's his birthday Re, uh, rena pro finance is already okay, 25 okay. years so is that my invitation? <laughs> no, we'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Uh, John Diba is, uh, is a head teacher here in Yaoundé. We are going to be talking more about uh, the basic education and all that entails. What is uh, the government doing to make our I, first school? I, I just the first I will be able to clarify the, the doubts coming from my own domain of specialization, yeah. which is the basic education domain. Ever. Thank you for inviting me and uh, uh, for renewing the confidence. And will be telling us the place of the first school living certificate today with somebody having the first school living certificate. We are going to be discuss a lot in education today. That Thank is, you, sir. We, 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 we need to talk about uh, uh, education. And also with me uh, is uh, Dr. Winston Angwanade. He's uh, coming from the University of Ngaoundere, just it's, it's a brother friend, John Niba. We, we grew up in the same village in my 16 Boya, Southwest region. When I got hold of him, I said, No, let us also, you should come and join us. Let us talk about uh, our university education. Good afternoon to you, Doctor. Good afternoon, Abel. I am delighted to be here to talk about our educational system. Probably not only university but the educational system of Cameroon to give our only two contribution yeah. to see that the our education be a booster for the growth of our country what what brought you to yaoundé 
I came here purposely this within this week. We came for the Siali Salon mm -hmm. d'Agriculture. Yes, uh, the event which is taking event place, taking yeah, place the at the Museum. National <laughs> Museum. We started on Monday the 5th and it will be rounding off tomorrow, Sunday the 11th of July. So at the University of Ghana, you Yupo had to, to bring in some, some issues. Because when I went there, I discovered that uh, you train a lot of Cameroonians in the agro-economic uh, sector. I am a lecturer in the National School of Agro-Industrial Sciences, yeah. NSAI of the University of Gandhari. And so is the mother school of the university, that is University of Gandhari. And its uh, main objective is to train engineers in three main specialties, agro-food process engineering, industrial maintenance and production engineering, industrial chemistry and environmental engineering. Out of the engineering sectors, we also have professional master's program in applied nutrition, quality control and management, heat and cooling system maintenance, and new programs that are coming up in industrial fermentation. And so with like all that. these things, we find Cameroonians, we engage themselves, some of those people you train, you see them succeeding? The school is out there to train professionals. Then you tell us after what becomes of the professionals. <laughs> the we are going to be talking about that. <laughs> Let me just pause you there. You train them, you say, okay, whatever thing becomes of you people, it's not our look at. And that is why we are talking about our educational system uh, this afternoon. Without waiting any time, we are going to move to our press review to find out what has been making news in the world of Cameroon, in the world of Cameroon and Africa, generally. And our press review this uh, afternoon is being done for us by a student journalist on internship here at Royal FM, Dewa Fabrice. Good afternoon to you, Fabrice. Newspapers in Cameroon this week focus on four principal news making stories. Cameroon's recognition with the euro bonds, the better of former Prime Minister Simon Achidi Achu, the launch of vaccination campaigns against the coronavirus pandemic in Cameroon, and the socio political crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. On the better of former Prime Minister Simon Achidi Achu, Cameroon's loan Balingua Daily Cameroon Tribune reported that Cameroon honored its departed patriot with a former statesman raised to the rank of Grand Cordon of the Cameroon Order of Merit during the burial ceremony held in Santa in the Mizam Division of the Northwest Region with Prime Minister Joseph Diongute representing the head of state, President Paul Bia. Lone English language daily, The Guardian Post in its Monday edition reported that President Bia and wife hailed the former PM as a level-headed, astute and political icon as the nation bid farewell to the fallen politician. Several papers carried stories on Cameroon's relaunch of business with the Eurobond. This week, French language outlet Eco Martin using the Spanish word remontada described the refinancing of Cameroon's debts by the Eurobond's collaboration as a major comeback success for the country in international money market. Lone English language daily, The Guardian Post in its Monday edition reported that President Bia and wife hailed the former PM as a level-headed, astute and political icon as the nation bid farewell to the fallen enigmatic politician. Several papers carried stories on Cameroon's relaunch of business with the Euro bonds this week. French language outlet the Eco Martin using the Spanish word remontada described the refinancing of Cameroon's debt by the Euro bonds collaboration as a major comeback success for the country in international monetary market. Le Quotidien reported that the refinancing of the debt to the launch in 2015 is an example of the renewed confidence investors have in Cameroon. Newspapers this week also paid special attention on vaccination campaigns against the novel coronavirus pandemic. Palingua Daily, Cameroon Tribune in its Thursday edition, said the heads of Cameroon's two houses of parliament, Honorable Kavaye Yege Jibri, Speaker of the National Assembly, and Senate President Marcel Nyad Difinji, both encouraged Cameroonians to get vaccinated to contribute to the eradication of the virus by actively taking part in a recently launched campaign. Eco Sante reported that figures from the East Regional delegate for health shows over 4,000 persons have taken the vaccine in the East region. The paper also says the Archbishop of the Baruna Metropolitan Diocese, Bishop Andrew Kia, set example by receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. The paper says that a total of over 7,000 persons have received the jab in the Northwest region. On a biometric registration of passports launched in Cameroon on July 1 this year, the Post newspaper in its Monday issue reported that the Director General for National Security, Martin Bagagele, delivered first passports in 24 hours. French language biweekly Le Joux said the recently launched project have begun yielding fruits. Concerning the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions, the Guardian Post reported that former Amazonian General Nambiri accused the military of plotting to kill him with the ex-separatist fighters setting the latest of such actions came as he recently led soldiers to hideouts of separatist fighters. The Guardian Post in its Friday issue said to know 
whether the five delegates kidnapped in the Dian division of the Southwest region are still alive one month after they are kidnapped by separatists. That is what we gather for you and your listeners. Till the rendezvous next week for more. Thank you very much, uh, Dewa Fabrice, for that uh, press review. Dewa Fabrice is a student journalist here on internship at the Radio House. I will begin with you, uh, Dr. Winston uh, and Gwana. I don't know. Let me not be calling doctor like this. Which meanwhile, you are already professor. You know, sometimes uh, yeah, we'll we do. These, these these guys <laughs> are very <laughs> are very. Uh, at times when it comes to the title but permit me use doctor this afternoon now you listen to the press review what actually caught your attention uh, this week that has been making news uh, in cameroon the first thing i really wish to talk on the biometric passport mm -hmm. yeah it is a good thing for passport to be delivered in 24 hours but my primary worry before you make a passport, you need a national identity card. How can we be talking of passport in 24 hours when people have made or have gone for ID cards for more than three years now? There is no ID. I want to believe, I want to really plead that if the biometric passport is being issued in 24 hours, the government should also take measures to deliver national ID cards as soon as possible because a lot of people will go in for national ID cards than they will go in for passports we've been discovered that, that this is some people even use their receipt to make a passport so i hope that is not a serious matter <laughs> people can use their receipts <laughs> to make passport but that same receipt expires after three months and you need to sign them again it is another wahala we know our Cameroon government so okay. <laughs> let us be serious <laughs> That is all that caught your attention. The vaccination against uh, Corona, it is mm -hmm. uh, vaccines in general are good, but I just wish to plead. I heard the other day, I don't know how serious it was, that the parliamentarian said vaccines should be put in water. And he came and back to say that he did not say so. I don't know whether he came back or not, but I saw a video on social media with a, a, a parliamentarian talking on that i just wish to plead to the body that be while it is good for people to be vaccinated they should know that vaccination is not an obligatory task it's not an obligatory tax yes but it is good that people take the vaccine also i said vaccination <laughs> i've not said vaccine for corona i just talked about but we saw also a communique uh, coming from the northwest region where uh the same vaccination is done under the supervision of the uh, of, of the deal and they require all divisional uh, the divisional officers uh, they require the all uh, principals of mayors all schools and mayors and all that when it goes to that situation it is no longer voluntary <laughs> that is why i said i'm just pleading with the body that be if you look if you look at the ethics of medicine you don't force somebody to take a, a drug you don't force somebody to take a drug even if the patient has his right it is the right of the patient to take a drug or not. You don't force somebody. So people should don't wish, except they have an, a, another agenda. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe there is no hidden agenda. Everything is for the good of the population. Yeah. So don't force people. Convince them to take. If you know it is good, there is no need to force. But you, you people are into to research. Can but we why? produce our own. You people are sometimes into research. That is some of the problems we are we are facing with our educational system. We I, want to talk about. Today. I don't really know much about uh, the the corona statistics. Yes. In like, let me see the corona statistics, especially here in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I have. I don't have exact figures. A, a much few of it. If, if yes, if you go if you go through the world statistics and you see the rate at which people recover from corona, you ask yourself whether there is any need for vaccination. We have things that kill more than corona in Cameroon, in Africa. Why do we cling so much on corona? I have not said corona is not a threat. It is a threat. But let us look everything put everything on the table and look at where the 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 the, the heat is really high mm -hmm. and try to solve it we should stop making corona to be as if uh, it is an almighty weapon 
It is a disease or an illness that to me has been mastered so well medically and even traditionally people are healed from corona. It is, it is not longer a world threat. We can even see even in Europe, look at the number of people that come out these days to watch football matches. It tells you that actually we have really uh, been able to master the, the coronavirus in the world. I move over to you, John Nibai, you're listening to the press review. I don't know what actually caught your attention uh, this week. Yeah, doctor has spoken about uh, COVID, but I just, uh, you ask a pertinent question. They are researchers. What about our own, our own uh, country medicine? Let me put it that way. That can be, we talk of modern, traditional type of uh, clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I wish to, I heard in the news, and I want to lot the, I want to congratulate the journalist who did the press review ever. If he's a, a student journalist, I think the, the future is bright and then the, I know you are always behind them. It means you are doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, he was fluent, he was good, he picked the stories and uh, did them briefly and that was a good job. Now, I want to find out. I heard that there is one bishop who took his own vaccine and paraded it all over the whole place. I want to ask that bishop whether he supported Monsignor Cleda when he came up with the cure of uh, COVID. And Monseigneur Cleda actually made it clear that he has healed so many people, hundreds of people. And he works in such a way that when you are tested positive for COVID in the hospital and you come to him, he treats you. And then you go and do another test and you are negative. The, it is, you see, when people are skeptical, when people, are, uh, when people go in for what is said more on social media than government, it is because... Things like this make us to ask questions. What is wrong with the formula elaborated by Monsignor Cleda? Why is it that no government official is communicating on that? Can they not tell us why the government is unable to finance it and make it to become great so that he can produce in large stock, so that they can supply our hospitals with it? Yet they run and go and bring vaccines from Europe and they now seem as if they are imposing it on us. Those are questions that we continue to ask. Why is it that a prophet is never respected in his homeland in this Cameroon? We have uh, this lady who talks about Unguru Betara that uh, the publicity is passing every day. Nobody, we have not heard the Minister of Communication or the Minister of Health coming out to give us the, the good sides and the bad sides of that. Or to tell us that they are lying, we should go in for or we should not go in for. Yet they go and bring vaccines because they have been produced by white people. To come and impose them on us i want to think that that is what is making people to be skeptical ever now another point that yeah, caught yeah, is it as if you wanted to say something on this yes actually with uh, modern traditional medicine the, the <coughs> problem i want to believe the government cannot come openly is because scientifically they have not tested whatever substance that uh, what stops it from being tested scientifically that, that is, is the right. question we're asking I'm, I'm arriving there <laughs> that scientifically it has not been tested and if oh, it has not been tested the government cannot take upon itself how long does it take the, that is the question ask that to the ministry <laughs> of research and ministry of scientific research because as we are saying when things like that are, are coming up and there is a claim that somebody can actually treat this it f if i was the one in charge i would say okay let me take this do some scientific test on it and see really if it can go through if that is the case then after a test such a thing can be branded and even uh sub subversions be given for mass production but we hear the world organization has the final say maybe no, there's a problem maybe before you continue i will probably tell you that for example the yeah. the, the groom that you that, you, that, that you do make mention that uh, uh the publicity runs in this house you discover that nigeria took that same medicine like what he's saying they did the research and they have given the lead way for that medicine you mean the nigerian government the nigerian government through the University of Lagos. Okay. They took it, they went to their lab, they checked the substances, they discovered that really... The Ngurubitara is effective. It's effective. <laughs> and they've given the leeway for it to be traded in that uh, in that country, to be found in their pharmacies uh -huh. as a means to, 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 to eradicate the COVID-19. The, the, the COVID it is the same thing, like what you talk about, the Cleda stuff, that here you come, 
It shows, it shows me your medical res result. You show the medical result, it treats you, you say, go back and do and it. Do a test and come analysis. back. You know, the, 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 there is a time, even within a, a, a traditional setup, with the issue of malaria. Sometimes when there are people back, they treat you with the issue of malaria. They always tell you, go and do a malaria test. test. And when you go and do the malaria test, it's still found in your bloodstream. They still continue. I remember, I, 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 I once had that type of a situation. I had to take drugs on tea, drugs on tea. And I was doing uh, the, 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 the test with uh, the, the brother of yours who was doing nursing. Um, voila, you understand? When we do the, 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 the test, until one point, it shows negative. And since then, I've not had that, 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 was that critical uh, malaria again. So you see, that is what we are saying. That if we have something like that, it is good. Our researchers will go and research and tell us. So that uh, we'll see uh, how we can push somebody. It's a uh, Grace Lampard. He says that uh, nice prof. Uh, he's following uh, the program this this afternoon. He says, uh, G, 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 People who, against all the odds, in that particular region that we know, where for some time now, anything that represents government is considered a taboo. And these people have put their lives on the, land, on the line in order to continue to propagate government ideology and to represent government in that particular part, part of the country. They were kidnapped until one of them was killed. And up to today, we have not had any communication on that coming right out there from the Minister of Defense. We don't know whether they are still alive, whether they are doing how their children, their wives, and their family members are worried. And nobody seems to be saying anything about it. We don't know if anything, any moves have been taken. And that is the type of journalism we encourage, Abel, where the papers go to bring out things like this that are buried and nobody is talking about this is human lives we are talking about there were six of them one died one was killed the five others we are not getting anything about them whether they are still alive or they are dead you get you got the phone there is one phone of a certain village in the northwest who was equally kidnapped he's he was there from over over a month nobody was talking about until he died these are people who fight they put their life in order to push forward government ideas there were delegates working for the government and it is not good for the government just to stay mute maybe they are doing something but we civil society we are worried we want to know what is being done in order to bring back these people and we think that they have been in captivity for so long mm -hmm. that at least they should have at least been brought back or government should have said something about them so that their family members so that their friends so that their relatives and sympathizers like us should at least know that something is being done to protect or to, 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 to show that government cares about people who continue to work to push forward its ideas. Uh, now, I let me see. Abel, I think those were some points that uh, caught my attention. I end with still in the Anglophone problem with uh, the, one of the papers talk about the crisis and... Uh, talking about this uh, issue of uh, the, 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 the killing of Jibril mm -hmm. below Foncha, that we saw the population came out and actually manifested with his corpse. And it resembled again what happened in 2016 when the crisis just started with one young man that was shot and the intestine came out and we saw how the population was carrying him everywhere. Uh, what is bringing me back on that is first of all because the papers talk about that and secondly Abel, I want to just comment on the communication that was done by uh, the military spokesperson mm -hmm. who labeled uh, so many uh, 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 so many crimes on Jibril which contradicted with the points of the population the population continued to say that Jibril was a good a transparent businessman but according to uh, uh, government represented by the spokesperson of the military he said he was a terrorist he was working with ambazonians and all that 
and that he attempted to escape when they stopped him and he was shot but i want to ask a question so the only thing to do with somebody who attempts to escape at a checkpoint is to shoot the person that's the first thing and then if you want to shoot the person do you shoot him on that particular point where that person will die immediately we cannot even shoot on the leg or shoot somewhere to immortalize him and catch him in civilized countries Abel, when a suspect is killed in a certain way the person who killed that suspect is questioned because some people kill suspects to hide even their own implication in the issues so it is really a worrisome thing and i will use this opportunity to call on the military ever to know that if they want to make their job to ease their job to make their job easy they should stop all this what they call in french bavou or, or military uh, military mistakes on the civilians because they scare away the civilians from them and the civilians cannot give them any tangible information which makes their job more complicated and this as this idea of government coming out always to, to to brandish a whole list of issues on some people who are no longer alive they are not even given the opportunity for us to listen to their own side of the story is terrible it resembles what was published after the death of was easy now when you say jibril was working with ambassador was a terrorist he was this he was convicted we don't have any lawyer talking on behalf of jibril we don't have Jibril who can actually answer for himself. That is and the, you expect him to believe only that, your own that, side that of is the story, the, that is the which is source. actually really That terrible. is our own John Niva. Thank John you. Niva, who is uh, a regular year at Royal FM and is we are commenting on uh, the issue of the press. I already see some people already uh, sending in their question when it comes to uh, educational system. And I strongly believe uh, some of those questions are being addressed to Winston uh, uh, and Guadalupe. We will have the opportunity to reach your question question Gwashiri Pride and Dasi we got your question what actually caught your attention this week you can also contribute because uh, topics and realities is an interactive program you too can call us uh, to six five 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 four three four five seven that is our access code six five 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 four three four five seven or you go to six seven one one five seven three two one six seven one one five seven three two one those are our access codes if you feel as to send us a voice note if you don't want to to call but you want to send us a voice note via whatsapp you can do it on six uh, seven five five nine five two eight four six seven five five nine five two eight four and rest assured your voice will be heard yeah at the video we now move to our teaser question but before we do that let's work on staff lady promise akante who is here with our write-up of the day good afternoon to you promise good afternoon to you mr moderator staff man abel bella samari sure your week has been great weekend salutations to you listening to us on 88.4 fm and to those watching us live on facebook on royal fm cameroon a very cordial welcome to all our panelists. The week has been very busy with a lot of things happening that got Cameroonians talking, like the ongoing crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Recently, some people in the diaspora staged a protest out there demanding an end to the conflict in those two regions. The question here is, why manifest out of the country? Those back home bear the pains, the untold misery of lockdowns, ghost towns, no schools, not forgetting gunshots and the burning down of schools and houses. Those in the diaspora sit in their luxury and comfort, giving orders for the people back home to be uncomfortable, yet they cannot come home and fight for the independence they claim to be fighting for. Why send arms to the people back home, sending them to the battlefield and protecting your own self? This diaspora, which of course is not entirely bad, seems to be playing a not too good role in the struggle. Maybe the real cause of the crisis has been derailed, with people more concerned about their personal gains and positions. The whole thing seems as confusing as the educational system in Cameroon. The English subsystem of education that used to pride itself as the reference in education in Cameroon, with quality teaching, trustworthy exams and reliable certificates, seem to be a shadow of itself of recent. Things have changed negatively over the years. Standards are falling. Non-English speaking Cameroonians are now thinking that they can do well or even better in the system. 
the quality of teaching is on a downward move, even the exams written are of doubtful importance. The blame game is on. Parents and teachers pointing accusing fingers at each other and the young learners caught in the web or even creating more havoc. Who is to blame? What can be done to remedy the situation? Is there, is there any hope? Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners and panelists, we have the task to bring the much needed positive change. A call or a text message will do. And for you present in this beautiful blue, brightly lit, air-conditioned Studio Thompson of Real FM 88.4, do not hold anything back. Say it as it is. This is Topics and Realities. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for Mr. Kante for that uh, press review. Uh, we we'll take our teaser question. Mr. John Niba, we want to evaluate uh, the role of the diaspora in uh, the ongoing social, economic, and political crisis in Cameroon. Last Saturday, we saw a group of Cameroonians uh, out there in France demonstrating. Uh, the question I want to ask you, does such demonstration have any impact in Cameroon, they demonstrate out of the country. Does it have an inch or does it have an impact in Cameroon? John Diba. Uh, well, Ever, thank you. I will take that question in a very superficial way. <laughs> Are you saying that if your child visits the neighbor and the child start and that child start crying in the neighbor's house, it does not affect you because the child is not crying in your house? It does not have any impact? These are Cameroonians. They were not French people. They are Cameroonians who have gone out there to hustle. And when everybody goes out to hustle, even behind the mind is that when I make money, I will go back home. That is the dream of every young person. When I have made money, I have to come back home to invest. And these people have realized that the way things are going in the country as they are out there hustling hoping to come and invest and develop cameroon the political class is making cameroon to be going down degrading deteriorating where they themselves are ashamed to identify themselves as cameroonians outside there because by the time you say you are cameroonian if 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 if, uh, if it is not because of football that may quote some individuals like samuel Eto and others who gave us a good name when they go to other things they'll be talking about corruption they'll be talking about the imprisonment of political leaders they'll be talking about political prisoners they'll be talking about uh, terrible videos on, on on social media and all that so they themselves they are not comfortable and when you listen to the way they talk they talk with a lot of patriotism when they call on because people. we are for for, for 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 almost five years that we we have been having a crisis uh especially in the northern and southwest region we have seen what they, they come out at too many times at one point we even thought that uh coming out like this there will be some changes in terms of negotiation in terms of everything let's take this call online hello yeah, good afternoon uh Abel Samari. good afternoon <laughs> Oh, good afternoon. How is Dwala this uh, afternoon? It rains every day. It rains this morning. Even in Yaoundé. <laughs> yeah, everywhere in Dwala it rains there. Even in Yaoundé. So how is Dwala faring? What is Dwala, making news in Dwala? Uh, you know, Dwala is the time of the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
But at this material moment, there is nothing that has been featuring in Diala as of now. Now, Jeff, what do you think of the role the diaspora is playing in, in the promotion of uh, peace and development in Cameroon? I've not gotten you well. What did you think? What, what is your reaction when you look at the Cameroonian diaspora? To you, are they meeting up with the promotion of peace and development in the country? Yes, when you talk of uh, Cameroon diaspora, do you think those who are abroad making something beneficiary to the Cameroon? Yes, of course. You know, the role here in Cameroon is to make a lot of uh, uh, good development in Cameroon, but you know, taxes and other things, it is uh, skyrocketing the atmosphere. When guys go over there, they want to bring in development in the country. Here, people will be talking of taxing this and that. And you know, uh, the economy of Cameroon now depends on the remittances. You know very well. For instance, if somebody dies in the country, those who are in the diaspora, they will send money, they will send money to do this. When it comes to us that we are here, it is really perturbing. To the greater extent, I would like to let the government allow these guys to come back and invest in the country. Because when they want to open a project, you will see taxes here and there, and it will disturb them from uh, opening uh, this uh, newly injected uh, oil fun industry into the country. Okay. Thank you very much and stay blessed in Douala. Yeah, may God bless you and you stay on with the program. I know that uh, the Akante and the other, when I sit here in Douala, I think of you in Yaoundé. I am too nostalgic. We also do miss you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is our own Chefon Chefon all the way uh to do Allah. yes johnny but you were saying something yeah well, i'm rounding up i am saying that that very diaspora you see they are the one who showed uh, a lot of responsibility uh, 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 uh why, why they are out there there are many cameroonians here they they because of the misery because of the bad governance system in cameroon they remain poor and they look up to that diaspora for feeding, for medication, for school fees, for everything. Family members that are back home here look up to them and it weighs on them. Because it is not because you are in uh, out of Cameroon, you are in Europe or, or anywhere, that money becomes leaves. No. It means that if, if, if living conditions here in this country are better up, and they can only be better up by decision makers, if good decisions are made, and so you mean to tell us that we have the, the, uh, we have been taking bad, bad decisions in Cameroon? Amen. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Nobody, nobody to needs you. nobody needs to come and say because that. Because you see, I think the Cameroonian diaspora is the most violent these days in in, in Europe. And it is. Reacting. We have other countries. It is, it is a reaction to an action. The Cameroon diaspora has never been violent like that. If it has become like that, it is because they have been given time. And they have seen that those ruling us don't have ears. They cannot hear. So they can only get maybe very violent action. And that action, Ebel, we should not confuse them. This is the type of diaspora government calls bad diaspora. But we think that this is patriotic diaspora. Patriotic that is what says destroying? Patriotic because when they cry for the end of the war in the Northwest, when they cry for a, 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 an inventory or an audit to be made for those who invest in government uh, uh, COVID funds. That is not anti-patriotic move. Those are moves that all of us in this country, we also long for, but we cannot talk aloud. You know why? Because if you talk aloud here, you will not have the next opportunity to speak aloud again. So they can only use other countries to make their voices heard, of which I have no problem with that. If you don't want to continue to hear their voices, listen to them, start solving some of the problems they are bringing up and they will now naturally stay quiet yes yeah uh, i want to i want to believe the diaspora as uh, he rightly said john neba uh, john neba yeah thank you as he rightly said is a patriotic one it is just a matter of action and reaction when people act others will always they, they will react and the reaction is based on the action we have a country i want to you see mr abel i actually believe in the national anthem of this country the refrain land of promise land of, of glory. glory cameroon is a land of glory and 
if the policy makers, the authorities that be make this land a promising one, people will not react the way they react. If people go out, they are going out because they are looking for greener pastures. They are not going out there for tourism. I wonder how many Cameroonians will actually leave and go out for tourism. Uh, very few will leave and go out for tourism. When they go out there, is for greener pastures. And they are going for greener pastures because things are not well in this country. There is a lot of unemployment. Yeah, very soon you said we'll come back to education and talk about professionalizing, professionalizing our, ed our education system. Not everybody has that opportunity to get a good job. And even if they have a good job, probably you're having a job and you have a lot of family members to take care of. Now, some people are going out there to look for means to help their families. That is true. And when you are out there, I, I bet you, when my first time going out of Cameroon, I used to call people and inform them what is happening in Cameroon. I remember. Yes. Well, you because have, when you are we, out we, there, we, it we is... We had a serious exchange. You tell me that I'm giving you a right information. I say I'm in Cameroon. I'm a journalist. You say left there your own. I'm giving... I'm, I'm, the, the thing is, when you are out there, you know very well that you are in a foreign land. It is not your home. And... The that, that's why you get, he pushed you to become so violent. At least you know, have this experience. They were, I, I, don't think, violence, I don't think it was a violence. I saw on social media, uh, social media people marching. I didn't see them destroying, destroy anything. fighting. I didn't see anything. I don't know. Probably there was some sort of violence. But I just want to believe it was based on a certain action. Probably their actions or reaction might not be right. It might not be good for the image of the country. But that's it. It is an that, impulse. That, that, that those who embezzle the COVID it funds, is, it are is, they cleaning the image it of is, the country? It is an impulse from a bad action. Now, the thing is, look at the root cause. What is the cause of that uprising in the diaspora? When Cameroonians are marching out there in the diaspora, what is the root cause? And to me, that root cause is just the policy that we make here in Cameroon. And that is why we also want our diasporas when they go out there, like yeah, Johnny yeah. Bauer was saying, they should want the money and come back and develop the nation. Not the I we, yeah, we yeah, in yeah. my opening in my opening uh, in my opening statement, you asked me about Siali. Yes, I was there with Siali, and I was there with a CEO who has stayed more than thirty years yeah. overseas, yeah. but has come back. And is developing machines here in Cameroon, producing Good. machines. Those are positive. Just I want to believe he went there, probably studied outside, had a certain technology, and has come back. He is producing machines. The machine he bought there but was that a machine to cut the goose. Those, that, that is why I'm telling you that all not everybody who goes out there is going out there to go and remain. All of them, they have that passion, that love for country. And if the environment is conducive enough, they will always be there. They will always be here to boost the economy and development of this Amen. country. You are a clear example. You went out there, you come back. You back. It's because you love the country and you are struggling to do everything. Why have you not given up? Anyway, let me introduce uh, uh, Wumi Betran. He's a secondary school teacher of the history department, but he's a politician with the SDF uh, party. I saw you people celebrating the 88 uh the 80 let me put it like my man chi uh was saying that is 80 anniversary of uh of uh your national chairman ni john fundi on his behalf i say happy birthday to you thank you and uh <laughs> you should not only say happy birthday to 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 me but you should instead say happy birthday to all, all cameroonians okay. because uh, we consider him as uh, uh the uh, the the great the great soul of our time so uh, I think he's a very good person. Before I begin, I would like to extend my regards to those who are looking at us, or who are listening to us, because uh, without uh, them, we are not here. So we are an instrument into their hands. And I also extend my regards to my co-panelists, the technicians. Yeah. And to you, Abel, I'm very grateful for uh, the invitation. Thank now, you. You, you met us, we are talking before we move on to our main topic, which is going to be our education. What is the role of the diaspora in the promotion of uh, peace and development in Cameroon? When you look at the Cameroonian diaspora today, are you satisfied with what they are doing? Uh, our diaspora is uh, is a complex. I can, I, can, I can say a complex group. Yeah. It is very. It is not always very easy to to classify to them. classify them because we didn't. They are good diaspora. They are bad. No, 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 not at all. Not at, by the way, by the way, by the way, uh, there are people who maybe why they were living in Cameroon hated Cameroon so much, so much so that when they <laughs> left the country, uh, they became something else. 
it is true we have such people and we cannot we can that's their opinion we cannot we, we can't deny that from them so our, our our diaspora we have different categories people who are happy of the stage or people who are happy with the status quo uh people who are happy of uh, uh what is going on in the northwest and the southwest uh, we have some uh, now which is very vocal, uh, those who are in support of uh, one uh, political leader in Cameroon was very much in support of, of him. And we even and saw his, uh, if it, he denounced that he doesn't know. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, you know, I will not, I will not say certain things here because, you know, I, I don't hit on, a, on, on an ambulance. I always wonder whenever I'm talking, uh, there should be somebody to respond. Okay. Right. Because from what we saw, we saw that he is, he, he actually, uh, he was afraid of what would take place on that on the third so that's why on the he came out with that communique he was very very much afraid oh, he, you know he he, he very denounced them and when things went well he came and said okay i congratulate you then now i'm coming up and say okay when you are congratulating people who match on that 30th in france 30th june in france and we're marching to alongside with uh, the amazonian flag now you you say you are a unionist uh, what are you are i don't know how i don't know what the of form of government that he will run, want to implement in cameroon but it doesn't work that way because as a as a military SEF, i can never create a manifestation where i want to see the amazonian flag okay let's come back to the, let's come back to the diaspora let yeah. us maybe abandon the ideology of this uh, of, of of this political party you are struggling to talk about but when we look at them can we be a satisfactory uh, can we say we are satisfied with the role these diaspora are playing for example if you take the anglophone crisis most of what is happening in the crisis today is being totally controlled by those who are not even yeah in the country that those who are out in the country they dictate the, the, and the people are going through a lot of hell and when we sit and look at these our brothers who are out of the country like somebody says that their action can we really say it is satisfactory good now you have really taken the diaspora into what we know as the anglophone diaspora or the english-speaking diaspora of cameroon you see uh in the struggle for their homeland as they call it in quotes mm -hmm. you see we have seen a lot of a lot of confusion a lot of backbiting a lot of vices in what they are doing a lot so uh you you will see someone like Chua Yaba will never want to see Akwanga you will see Akwanga will never want to see uh, Chris Anu it's a whole confused group of people and who are those suffering that's always asking who are those suffering in this issue that people on the so in, in, in on ground zero as they call as they call it people on ground zero that one suffering those who buy arms and send there in the northwest how do they think what do they think of the suffering of the people because you see now it has come to a stage where uh, even those of the diaspora who used to a sponsor when they are in short of finance what they do is that okay you put you can uh, you can do the things for yourself and what, what what do they do they indulge themselves in kidnapping and asking for ransom so it is, it is it is no no let me say things that are clear we know that we are in Cameroon. we know what is happening so in order for them to survive sometimes they indulge okay. themselves in in kidnapping and asking for ransom and it is it happens we, we know it we know of that so nobody can can, can deny the fact but the truth is that how did we get there yep. it, it is true that you know some circumstances can put people on a certain i don't know eh? on a certain platform on, on a certain, certain space. yeah so today the issue is we should talk we should think more of how to come out of the crisis we should talk more of how to dialogue and if we want to talk about the di about, about dialogue somebody says it is time we create a national uh, reconciliation commission i believe that so i believe that i believe that those who think they are of the Amazonian front because no Anglo not, not all the anglophones are Amazonians. those who think that are of the Amazonian front let them create a group in which because i said people like ayaba cannot talk to each other in fact ayaba cannot talk to this man, this man cannot, they are all leaders they are all leaders, but they don't talk to anybody. Can so if they create, if they can create a a a a a a, a, a strong a group, can just talk to nature. They do. They are still the same political. They party. do. No, they do. They do. <laughs> they do talk I to each other. To. So, so my brother, wait before you, before you, before you yes, ask. You're, you're, I, I am saying that. Up. I am saying that. And you understand why many countries, in fact, almost all the countries of the world, none of them, none of them, none of them. Right. my brother none of them none of them have been able mm -hmm. we have some groups they should come together and create a, a powerful bargaining power because if 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 the united nations wants to 
come up mm-hmm. or uh, uh, the, the street talk would they have so many factions of people saying the same thing so people who have who want the same thing are fighting on so it can, these things cannot work this way so it's very important they form a group mm-hmm. and countries you will see countries like Sw- switzerland we see countries like the Canada and other countries that will come now and maybe mount, mount more pressure on the BI gov- government. But if they are separated, they are divided in everything. You, uh, in fact, if a car comes up and says on the live to and say, okay, uh, please, can we sit and dialogue? They will start calling a black leg at once as he says that. You say each time somebody talks about dialogue within the Abazonian leaders, they start calling you a black leg, which is a very bad thing. So mm-hmm. they, they have created some sort of a of a an, a, a, a war a war economy. That is a situation where they themselves cannot at, 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 at where we stand now. It they is very difficult for the leaders. Situation. It is very leader, it is very difficult for the leaders to put an end those who are in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the foreign countries. It is very, very difficult because they have already created what we call a, a war economy. An economy that is that that is uh, you know that is that is uh, uh, that is uh, based on war. So everybody knows that I can just kidnap this person, I can lend money, I can I can blackmail this person and he gives me money. So that is what we are we are we are we are we are we are, we are getting the in in the Ambazon, in fact in the in the northwest and the southwest today. We know that very well. Okay. We we we, we have a message here, uh Sabwe Valerie says courage Abel Bella. I love this program. I'm watching and listening in my taxi. Uh we say good afternoon to you. Now, John Nibai, you wanted to, to, to say something? before uh, yeah i want to talk something on behalf of uh, the manifestations that took place yeah. and uh, the outing what are, what are of the professor calls? maurice come to uh, yeah i want to tell you because you said uh, the cameroonian diaspora seems to be the most violent diaspora because in the world and i want to i want to abide because in africa who, who, by who, who, the one mali saying. is having a lot of problem but we don't see uh, malians demonstrating no they do they do, yeah. they do they do oh, they do they do as cameroonians do uh, yes. they all, no. that, all the diaspora let they me, do even nigeria trace, they do that all the time let me trace a bit the the root causes of this violent diaspora ever mm-hmm. the diaspora of cameroon was very peaceful until in 2018 when the presidential election took place in Cameroon and the debates after the election at the Constitutional Council and the position that was taken by Clement Atangana and his college of judges there judging everything to be irreservable since that date i think that that debate that took place opened the eyes of many people who expected that either either there was supposed to be an election re- rerun which was not the case because all the political parties that constituted their lawyers there presented tangible reasons why some people in the diaspora thought that the election should be cancelled but since that date since the decisions that were taken there and everything was considered irreversible. Pushed some people to adopt the radical part of it, okay. and that is why they are violent. That's first. Secondly, you have this instability in the northwest and the southwest region, Ebel, where most of what we call the Anglophone diaspora, they have lost almost everything. Some of them don't even have villages again. Some of them have lost family members, and the only and they themselves have even lost that legitimacy of coming back to this country so it is only either the fight they die fighting or so they, they bond, remain them outside they bond the of Norway and the because that, they don't is have what, in please, that is what i'm saying that it's, i'm saying that i uh, i've earlier said this it is not only dialogue it is nothing i think that president paul beer can solve this problem for okay. sure let me give you a, a just imagine an outing on crtv by president paul beer to say that all of us are children of Cameroon. We must have bought weapons and sent home. We must have commanded people to kill or to kidnap. But let us stop this thing. Your sins have been forgiven. You can get back the Cameroonian passports and come back. Let's build this nation. If he makes a statement like that, that is talking about reconciliation. If he makes a statement like that, I don't want to go into and that dialogue why and whatever thing. If he makes a statement like th- that, those who are talking about uh, 90 percent yeah. of those leaders who know that they have lost everything, they will never see their family members, their positions in Cameroon. 90 percent of them will calm down, okay. and the few will dance without support, okay. and they will calm down. Thank you very much. But I want to very much yes. disagree when. 
uh, 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 and a political party says they don't want to talk about another political party, but they do talk about it. It is hypocrisy. Okay. Uh, our 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 brother here said he never wanted to no, talk about he, CRM party because they are not represented here, which yes. is good. But he ended up. No, you just, you he just ended up saying that no. Kamto was afraid. He said maybe. Or what will happen? Please. He said, no, maybe. Maybe. And maybe. so he came out after to you take glory. I want to say this. If he maybe he was not the time is a good thing. Are you allowed me to laugh? No, I want you to correct my brother is defending the man is going to say I'm saying this. I'm saying this. I listened to Cameroonian diaspora that was worried about the situation okay. in Cameroon. They were not worried about you, the Geneva. position of the CRM in Cameroon. Okay, they you. never invited people to register for the CRM. Thank Neither you. were they raising funds to support the CRM. Thank party. you very much. So to me, I, I think the diaspora was so patriotic, I, I will, fighting for the good of Cameroon, not for the good of Maurice Kamto. You are not a military. Can, of, uh, can I react no, 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 let, let me take this SMS. He says, hello, Mr. Modjovic, greetings to you and your panelists listening to news event what caught my attention was the biometric uh, passports i'm surprised in cameroon a passport could be established in 48 hours this leaves me with two questions firstly does it mean that the cameroonian police have been deliberately refusing to render service to cameroonians take the case of identity cut secondly is the biometric passport going to continue to be within 48 hours or is just for the beginning it is ken wow it has been a while ken can that I, uh, can i react can i react few seconds we are moving out of this subject yeah you see i did not want to go detail into the issue because i said and there's no I, member of this yes, and, I, and, I, and i want you to and the next that. the next thing is that the next is that you cannot say that that a movement was a movement of Cameroon because i didn't identify myself there okay thank for, you for one reason for one reason no 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 for one reason no 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 i don't i'm not coming out of them okay we're, we're you, not you, you talking about you Cameroon didn't identify yourself there this other one i, go I am saying this nice grand prof I am saying this. You cannot make a mo a, a match a match a match power manifestation where you are talking of uh, Latin and say Camto, uh, uh, non the great about everything is partisan. Thank you. Thank you. Everything. Thank you, gentlemen. Everything was partisan. Gentlemen, we are not. We are not talking about partisan. We are not talking about partisan. We are not talking about partisan. We are not partisan. We are not talking about 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 partisan. That's why I said that. Cut the their microphone for me. <laughs> Gentlemen, the I'm the moderator. Bus. Mr. Wumi Betran. Uh -huh. Mr. Wumi, Amber. will you do me a favor? Can, do you want to moderate? No, it's okay, it's okay. I can still give you my seat. I'm done, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. It is with that that we move to our main topic for discussion today. I want to look at the educational system in Cameroon. And this is one of the issues that were discussed in the last session, uh, in, the, uh, in the, the just ended June session at the level of the National Assembly, where so MPs were very vocal, especially when the Minister of uh, uh, finance had to give uh, defend the budgetary orientation for the year 2022 right up to 2024 and some were saying that uh, in that budgetary system our uh, uh, we should invest more on our education let's first of all listen to this essay from honorable Lawson tabot and when we come back we dive into uh, our educational system in cameroon my worries which I was trying to put forth to the Minister of Finance and Economy was we are going through a very difficult process in our country. And for long, for more than 10 years, the programs we have been presenting are not taking us to anywhere. So I was asking that the, the budget orientation should, we should, we should gear towards technical, professional and technical ed educational curriculum of the country does not fit us for development. We are stuck now. You, you could realize that of more than two, three years back, if you see the development that is taking place in Boya, the young children who are coming out from school, IT sector, the film industry, you see that it is booming. The government needs to support that sector. We need to go professional. We have gone age of history, geography. We have gone age of that. We need to go professional. We need to go technical and professional education. That will boost the economy. If you are just joining us, the program is Topics and Realities, where we capture the topics and make it a reality in your life. That is why when you see a lot of argument, don't be disappointed. It is just part 
of building the nation Cameroon we must talk in order to construct a nation and the funniest is that at the end we must reconcile with one another we want to look at the educational system in Cameroon and I would like to begin from the basic right up to uh, the secondary to the university thank God I have uh, a secondary school teacher with me here on board I have a primary school teacher in the presence of Mr. John Miba Mr. Wumi Betran will talk more on education than his political party, the SDF. Now he's a secondary school teacher. And I also have Dr. Winston Nguanade, who will be telling us maybe concerning the university uh, sector. Now, Mr. John Niba, we see a lot of issues that is happening in our educational system, particularly the sector which you, be, uh, you belong to, that is the basic education. I want you to tell us, or maybe what is government policy towards rendering better quality education for primary school which is the foundation of our educational system Abel, um, it is true you would have invited people from the ministry of basic education and you know sometimes uh, they run away from the media good you they, are, you if, they, if, they, if, they, if they run away if and they, they will talk more of office stuff than the practical are you at the head you teacher? are asking about are government you policy yes you are not asking about the government policy what, what, the what, curriculum what is the, in, in that, that, that is what i'm coming what is the curriculum is that curriculum a one that uh we can sit and be proud of yes. when we see our children going that, to school the, 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 completing the, 806 uh, 806 years in the primary education the new the new curriculum for basic education yeah in cameroon today is a curriculum that we can actually be proud of okay i want to think that those who went out for research and brought back that piece of job did a nice job but but it is very difficult to be implemented in cameroon why <laughs> and i give you the difficulties and maybe before you go to the difficulties what are some of the the the, the things that okay, are found in the curriculum say, that first, makes it a better one good at first we laid more emphasis on writing making children to reproduce as if all of them were going to write literature books like the battle songs but now when you look at the new uh, 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 syllabus for basic education they lay emphasis on performing and communicating Creating it means us. it means ever when i teach history i don't need to set 50 questions for you to mark x or on the line mm -hmm. a child should be able to come and stand and we say okay discuss cameroon from 1960 to present the child discusses Cameroon. You discuss Cameroon with the child and we are discussing here. The oral part of it takes more credit than the written part. After that, they ask just two questions before to write. Because we have trained people who can write, who can carry things, certificate, but people they cannot even express themselves. themselves. Going to the sciences, we lay more emphasis on realizing, performing. That means every lesson that is taught, there is a practical what they call pedagogic projects that go with them every month we are supposed to realize a pedagogic project that matches with what you thought and we see that the curriculum are you been, doing it that is another i'm coming to okay. difficulties um the curriculum is made up in such a way that you have integrated learning themes i'm mm -hmm. using pedagogic language to use just it. understand use it to each just understand. integrated learning team we have eight integrated learning teams per year okay and uh, each one carries an integrated learning team. The for integrated example, learning team. For example, you parents have, are involved. Eben, uh, it yes. is an education family. Okay. And a family can never be complete without parents. Okay. We are not saying that the parents should come and understand what I call integrated learning team. That's my yeah. job as head teacher yeah. to bring in parents where they are supposed to involve themselves. Okay. So I'm saying this. If you look at the eight integrated learning teams, they have touched all the aspects of mm -hmm. human mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. You have games. You have sports, you have nature, you have education, you have uh, uh, occupation. Then it means that if you prepare a lesson in a certain month where in mathematics, a mathematics lesson, where they are talking about space, you, the way you formulate your questions at the end, 
the way you teach your lesson you are examples your calculations are based on things concerning space satellite drums and all that that is why you saw on CLTV one mother was struggling to give a lesson about drums and a child humiliated her because she is still getting into the new dawn because I must tell you about it is very very challenging many teachers have abandoned basic education and they have escaped because it is not easy to implement now let me bring the difficulty now when you go back what has been added on the curriculum we have practical life issues ever one you have artistic education where we have to drill children how to present sketches how to act little things act COVID, act malaria act hiv aids you have painting drawing and painting where children realize painting they draw and paint they can look at this studio and paint we have to drill them to paint ebel and other things you have photography where children we teach them how to use telephones how to use cameras to snap now talking about uh, they call it digital literacy that is the name of uh, photography and then uh, mm -hmm. ict so the thing is very much impregnated with so many things there you have agriculture mm -hmm they have cut they used to do rural science in those days attaching agriculture with other things now agriculture is a subject on its own you have the theory part and you have the practical part those are when you look objectively you see that this curriculum can actually bring up people who will be some people when they some who will be people of substance when they leave class six okay but now the but is always there mm -hmm. first difficulty most of the teachers who were trained ever some of the teachers who taught you as in teaching today they never had that type of training and it is very difficult for change to pass through people like that who tell you i've been teaching for 20 years what do you want to come and tell me today but in yes she's bringing uh, please, their please. graduates each year i'm i'm why can i i'm talking about training right? yes go ahead so when you go to the field you have Many of those to implement this are people who are refractive. They claim that we have been teaching for this number of years. How do you people want me to change now? And that change is not passing through them. That is why you say, you ask me the question, are you realizing the projects? I want to tell you that if you check not being a national pedagogic inspector, I think it is only 20% realized. That is the first difficulty. The second difficulty is that the program was carved out following a certain age group. And that is where parents come in. They know that in Cameroon, a child who enters nursery one should be at least four years. And that work is mapped out following a child of four years. But you parents, what do you do? Since we don't have babysitters, we find it difficult. We push children of one year, two years, three years in school. And they try to, the teachers also try to crack down the children with this program, which does not match. When you enter nursery one at the age of three, or at the age of two you will continue to remain behind and you meet work that is so heavy okay that you cannot stand then another thing is finance they expect the teachers to do miracle we need a lot of research we need a lot of material to be used but Abel, let, 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 do salaries let, 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 let me take this uh this caller online hello sir yeah, um, good evening to all fellow panelists, good evening to listeners of uh, Royal FM, and uh, good evening to you, Mr. Samari. Yes, uh, Mr. Njang Dennis, you are the principal of a secondary school here in Yaoundé. And uh, when I got in contact with you, I wanted to share an experience in which you had concerning uh, education. Without wasting much of your time, what actually happened? at the government balingua high school a source here in yaoundé yeah before i get into that question i just want to throw a little bit uh a little light on what people earlier talked on the, the demonstration that took place uh, uh the diaspora yeah please i just want to use even a minute to throw more light on that go ahead uh, i want to say that uh, those who took uh, manifestations in uh, the diaspora are very patriotic Cameroonians. They are disgruntled Cameroonians who are not happy with the manner in which the BRG manages the country. Okay. Uh, it is rather unfortunate that such uh, opportunities are never granted here in the country. Um, I have been a victim on several occasions where we, 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 we tried to organize just a mere 
uh, meeting, not even a manifestation, and uh, we were heavily, uh, um, um, we were heavily surrounded and uh, intimidated by the presence of the forces of law and order. If if such opportunities that the Jafura are uh, out there in, in out of the country and such opportunities we are still uh, given here in the country, I believe that we would have. Uh, done worse than even what is being uh, carried out there in the diaspora. So, uh, those who took the manifestations are Cameroonians. Um, we don't want to know if it belongs to whether which party or which party. If they decided to add it to whosoever, I think it is their, their decision and, uh, and uh, they have the absolute right to add it to whosoever they feel they see as uh, someone that they can add it to. So, I don't want to stigmatize any political party or any political leader for the Jafforans to use his image or whatever to see as a source okay. of change. I think it is an absolute right. We are we still have we have Jafforans also carry out manifestations in support of other political leaders. I don't think we should focus on one. We have had other political leaders whom uh, the Jafforans have adhered to for the past years. We have seen you in we have seen you in we have seen you whosoever, I have all everybody, so I don't think uh, it's an issue of stigmatizing a political party or a political leader or calling names. I'm sure it's just frustrated Cameroonians. I think even before the the, 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 the presence or let me say the, the limelight of that political party that we are, someone is trying to stigmatize, okay. the Jafurans have been carrying out manifestations uh, ever since. I don't think uh, it's an issue of a political party. Thank you, I President. Any, I don't see anything wrong for any Cameroonian of goodwill to choose anybody okay. who seem, whom he sees as someone who could, uh, who could rely on his uh, ideology or doctrine Thank for a change to come. I think it's uh, absolutely right. Thank you very uh, much. Coming back to, yeah, coming back to uh, uh, what uh, you for your concerning the topics that you for are yeah. uh, working on now. On our yes, education uh, system. So, um, I'm talking here now as a an educationist, someone that promotes uh, education. Yeah. I teach a principal and uh, even a proprietor. Yeah. Yeah. You see, um, what actually transpired um, in, in the government bilingual high school resource? It is something that um, I I even came out and I. I made a, an open uh, 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 publication on that on my on my on my page on my Facebook wall. Yeah, because um, the, there is this notion that um, um, some of uh, our police, I call them colleagues, who are able to be matriculated by the government, always feel that um, those in the private are treated as as underdogs. So um, we 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 are when I. Uh, went to the government bilingual high school resource. Uh, yeah, it is true that I was a victim. I, one of my candidates was uh, a victim of uh, of someone pirating her, her timetable. Yes. So when I arrived, uh, a scene, and uh, I was I, I was very very disappointed with the tone and the manner in which uh, um, the chief superintendent and the principal of that college, the manner in which they treated. Uh, one of my colleagues and myself, okay. and irrespective of what we try to explain, and uh, we were—I I mean, I faced a lot of prejudice. I even tried as much as for us to discuss uh, pedagogically as our friends, but uh, there was so much pride, arrogance, and uh, disrespect uh, towards their friends of the uh, of the private sector. I don't want to go into details because um, uh, when I made the post, some people tried to downgrade the whole thing and try to link it to a political motivated. Uh, 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 approach, no. but I want to stick to my point as a teacher, yes. the principal that um, the GCE, the standard, I mean the GCE board and the Anglo-Saxon system is one of the few heritage that uh, Anglophones still see have and is still standing. So there is no way um, me as an individual who was brought up by that system yeah. would ever in any way endorse any form of examination malpractices, nor encourage anyone whatsoever or for whatever reason to indulge in any form of okay. examination malpractices. But that notwithstanding, uh, we, 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 we know that uh, we have charlatans who are moving around trying to discredit um, those, those who are really doing something good. So I made that post to call the attention of uh, the chief superintendent, no. Can I ask the, you a question? the principal of that college, uh, based on so many complaints that our students, uh, Mr. The Mr. students Mr. Of the Mr. private and uh, the teachers of the okay. private face uh, uh, were facing and uh, the prejudice that they, they received from, okay. from, 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 from uh, uh, those people in charge of organizing exams. 
So, man, this is a fast now. I think uh, the most important thing is that we need to move forward. Uh, we need to collaborate. There should be more collaboration. Okay. There should be more synergy between those of the private and of the government. So that at the end of the day, whether you are a private teacher or you are a government teacher, okay. you have a lot to contribute to nation building. Thank so you. I don't make that put a way of reconciliation and then try to bring out um, some of the us because it's not, it does not really speak good for our educational uh, system or especially um, with the ongoing exams uh, GC that the children are very soon they will be running up maybe on Monday. Okay. Thank you very much uh, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, I, I, once more I really enjoyed the program and I wish you for the best and uh, I'm still sticking to my radio set to uh, follow the debate as it unfolds. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much Mr. President. Yes. Okay. Let me learn Abel by yeah. saying that. Okay. One of the biggest obstacles is lack of financing, mm -hmm. and this lack of financing is developed on two domains. First of all, the treatment of basic education teachers in Cameroon, and I want to go more on the majority because when you look at majority of basic education teachers in Cameroon, they are lay private and private school teachers. Government employs just a few. Government does not employ the majority. Yet, the majority, what treatment is given to them? The lay privates and the privates. It seems as if government... The government gives subvention. Go, wait. You are talking about subvention. I have been working with my patron for 14 years today. I have never benefited something in the name of subvention. If the government, like I said before, wanted that teachers should benefit the observation, they should insist that these teachers should have bank accounts. The government pays the money in the bank accounts. If it is 100 francs, you will know that a teacher will benefit it. As you give to the... So that is, one of, that is a contributing factor to the degrading standard of our education. And then now, the, the last point on poverty is parents. The new program calls on parents to sacrifice a lot financially because we need always we need materials when we are talking about photography where children have to snuff when we are talking about painting and drawing you need material for that when we are realizing pedagogic projects children need material the school cannot provide why parents no mm -hmm. the school if the school wants to provide the school will still take from parents through increment of school fee of Later. which the parents cannot even pay and the government schools are even worse the government schools are even worse because when you look at the enrollment, you don't even know how you can group the children. And then COVID just came and spoiled everything because they have to work in groups. You, you don't know how you can group the children. Maybe they don't even have a computer in the whole government school and all that. Even in the center of Yaoundé, you have government school without computer lab uh, 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 laboratories. The children see computer in books as it is drawn so parents, in Japan. So parents, so, so, so parents, parents either because they are not willing because the parents keep on reminding you you remember yeah. there was the one prime minister in cameroon who said when he went to school he never had a workbook and he succeeded so parents too have that <laughs> idea that we never passed through this and we have succeeded in their own way so we don't see any need why people squeeze us us just because of uh, education. actually i actually that don't think so for us to implement the new I curriculum which is very good so parents these days they spoil their children if it comes to education i want to believe cameroonians are come they come a typical cameroonian parent you are talking about parents well, in town you don't even know the number of parents even I'm, let us let I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking i'm talking i'm talking one government school i'm here, talking in Yaoundé, Yaoundé, i'm talking and you check in the school bags and see if there are 80 people in class how many of them have four and six books then you come and tell them to spoil their children with no them, when, I, when, when they are there Le, we, we can see can you allow me learn okay yes i have not if it is a fact it is a fact what you are putting up is a fact but when you put all the blames on parents no, i will tell you no if you are putting the blames like parents cannot afford or parents don't want to afford or parents are claiming that uh what they went through their children can still go through you cannot do such comparison nowadays things have changed you are talking, you are talking, see, I leave you are, you are, you are, you are okay. mentioning uh, telephones and all one not to primary school and nursery school children. And if they are doing that, I believe nothing can be 100%. <laughs> so, those that are doing, I appreciate them. Okay, we discover a lot of Thank things, you. we are identifying <laughs> the points. Mr. Wumi Betan, secondary uh, education in Cameroon. When the primary they, gi they give to the secondary, the secondary they tend to spoil it round. 
with the change of curriculum. Yes, before like the beautiful the quality of product that is given to the second. Let, 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 let me take this color. Hello? Yes, yes, uh, well, uh, Abel, the program is very interesting, and I know that the Chapman Chapman is over the airwaves, uh, the airwaves I know that the, that program is very good. I am very interesting. You must have uh, heard you spoken of uh, this is diaspora affair. Anyway, you know, when I hear your voice, I am always exhilarated here in Dwala. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dwala now is full of uh, oil and there is a lot of rainfall, but at this material moment that I'm talking, uh, the rain has uh, uh, subsided. So, you know, when it comes to, um, to Royal FM, I always say thank you and I always say kudos to your elbows and we shall rise up to the occasion. Thank you very much, Chofon. Thank you very much. Check, check on. Time to contribute. Yes, uh, I was trying to say that uh, with this uh, Copa America and uh, you know, which is we are talking about uh, at this point in time we are talking about the educational uh, uh, <laughs> the educational system in Cameroon. Does it actually promote uh, development? And a lot of blame is being given to parents that parents don't contribute as much as possible to help teachers to this great tax. What is your opinion about that? Yes, of course. Uh, no more emphasis on to parents. For instance, you can remember that in some schools, when a teacher punishes a child, you say father or mother, you are sure will come and retaliate or be the teacher. If a child has that uh, notion, do you think that that child can give anything positive to the to the academic no, situation no. in the country? So more emphasis will be laid on parents. You know, uh, Abel. When we used to come back from school, when a child does an error, the father would get a branch of coffee, trashes, or try the child at the time. But today, if somebody trashes your child, you will say, no, that person wants to take your child to Fibla or this. No, I will always say the educational system in Cameroon is below standard because they have that contributed in a They don't give rise to the teacher. A teacher a child. Hello? Hello, Chef Yes? We are, we are not getting you clearly. Maybe you change your position and try to call us later on. The, the line is fading. Okay, let me change the line. Let me say something which I've changed. Maybe you will be getting me. Okay. Are you getting me now, Five or Five? Steve, a, a, a bit. A, a, we are just trying to get you. Yeah, you just, so just hold on. Hello? Are you getting me? Hello? Yes, Bumi. When you when you have Please, a better position, Abel, will uh, let me. Uh, he said something that every year teachers training colleges. That is what they call in Yes, they train teachers. But now, my brother, if you look at the recruitment that is going on, they are still struggling to recruit people who were trained in 2010, 2011. Uh, meaning uh, that the product that is up to date okay. is still not recruited. Thank you. You had a lot. Of, you, you you had a lot of time. That to talk. is not a let, 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 problem let, now. Let, let, let me go to Wumi. You had the microphone. Yes. But before I talk, give me thirty seconds. Let me let me come back to what Denis said. Denis. No, 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 no. Let me. Uh, 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 no, no, this is what I mean. It is not part of no, my habit. Next, 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 next Saturday, we'll have enough time. For sure. Let's for sure. focus on our education. For sure. Yes, uh, we we'll have time to talk my about brother it. From I know you. Thank you, thank, thank you for, 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 for that respect. Okay, okay, okay. okay. My brother from uh, the basic education, the way he spoke, I I was asking myself, wow, it was more of a, of a, how do you put it, theoretical. He was like talking like somebody from a, from the ministry because he said, Hey, you should go to the ministry. But he started giving us statistics like people from the ministry. So, so what a master. Yeah, yeah. And, and, he has he has a good master. Yeah, yeah, that he has he has talking he, about is it the same he, he has a, having he, a secondary he education? He has a good mastery. Yeah. But like my brother said, he, he seemed to have maybe trying to blame to blame more the parents on yeah. what is he seemed I I I'm I didn't say I, you I said, said yes. I didn't say you said so who refused to change no and that the no, 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 with working no. conditions let me, and then I and then let me come let me come to where we are of those three he who has the greatest he will, he will, he will bear with me that <laughs> yeah the product we have at the level of the secondary education is not actually good coming it, from the from I, I the primary from the primary go I don't know. can i can I, can I can i can i say it go ahead go ahead can I, okay that's why that is why you people are here. yeah 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 let me say something you see there is this issue of uh maybe he will actually come on to tell us whether it is actually true yes. that there is this issue of uh collective, collective promotion, promotion okay because we have the impression that when we get children from form one we have the impression that it's a matter of collective 
uh, collective promotion. Let my people go. Let my people go. And, and, and so, yes. and so he says, I should come. And with they cannot be having such beautiful says, curriculum. He says, and they are still doing let my people. Go. Yeah, he says we should come with statistics, my brother. Take your phone, your your microphone, and go down to the market, and people they will tell people tell you. Me, any teacher, they will tell you. It's not a matter of having the statistics. You have it. You feel it on the field. Now let us look at as as the years are coming by, right? Yeah. We are seeing that children who are coming are weaker by the by the years. Are weaker. Why they are bringing other strategies, bringing curriculum, bringing certain I don't know. The, but the what are is clear. this aspect? What I'm saying is that you know uh, it is very important that question. That's why I the, the last time we talking about education here, and I said, what type of Cameroonian does the government want? What is it? Type of Cameroonian they want to have. That's the, the question the government. That defines, that the, type that defines of the type of that is the type of What is the type of Cameroonian government one? Is what you just explain in the No, see, he is he is just the Cameroonian guy will be able to communicate. We the type of Cameroonian that can be created. My brother, now we are just talking about the system for me, Mister Ebe. I don't know if I can. No, I will come to you. Yes, I want to. I I will come to you. I have a question which is even pending. Yes, we we are suffering within the system. That's why the last time I was asking this question. What is the type of man? The government wants what yeah. Cameroon, not type of Cameroon, but, what we look but at now we realize that we realize that the type of Cameroonian they want remains within a uh, theor theoretical an issue, it's an illusion. You see, we talked here the last time about uh, the 1995 uh, forum on education. Yeah, I told you that I was present, I was a little baby, a little child in a government bilingual primary school. We went there, we're, we're, clapping. Clapping. we're clapping, so we thought that things would change, but nothing. Now the product we have in our in our in our secondary education are not up to date. They are not actually good. You see, there are children that the only thing they can do in class is that when you give them MCQ, if you tell a child to write good morning, it's a problem. Most of them, it's a problem. It constitutes a problem in most schools. You tell even the big schools that you know, it constitutes a problem to them. Wow. Don't tell them to write anything. You just you just some they don't even know how to read. I mean, just to read, they don't know how to read. Now what? Hello, the, what? hello, hello. Yes, uh, that is uh, trouble, trouble, and I think I've changed the position. Are you hearing me five on time now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you some few seconds. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, what did you say? I didn't really get you very well. What were you saying? We're trying to find out the role parents should play in the betterment of our educational system. Yes, of course. Children, uh, parents have played very wrongly, negatively. As I was saying, as you didn't get me, I was saying that when a child does an error or a teacher punishes a child in school, instead of a parent to come and cooperate with the teacher, the parent comes and bully that the teacher. We have seen in many areas of the country, for instance, the case story with a daddy teacher that was in the math teacher that was assassinated there in Yahudi. So you see, it's because this child was not uh, brought into that life. And you see, parents have not been writing to the teacher. Instead of a day, a parent to go and compete with a teacher, and the teacher has done an error, let us compete and give this class. The parent will come with a heavy driven car, and this is the car in front of the child. So how would you expect a child to, 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 to make it? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, thank you very much for that contribution. And uh, actually, we, we still have some. Let's ask you. Have, you have, yes. There, there's a question I, I wanted to ask ask you. No, before I have not answered the question. You said where did we? Why did we? How Good. did we get there? Good. You see. So what are the problems? What are the real problems? The problem is the one, is that of motivation, my brother. You see, uh, a teacher, a teacher with a difficulty that we, we we face in life, and the second thing is that yes, you can even go into that uh, into that uh, profession without loving it, but the situation, the everything that surrounds it. The benefit that surrounds it can make and motivate you, yeah. right? But when you get there, you have your in, your in, uh, access into uh, say a normal. When you get there, and you are being sent to uh, Gary Gombo or uh, I don't know where Fruawa, and you spend four years, like how I did, four years, five years, six years, without having your first salary, the government, the government, uh, uh, you know, does. In fact, they do everything to to, so, to make you to, for, for to make you work for what you are trying to to tell to us. make you work. We what you, you are trying to tell us that one of the contributing factor is the quality of teachers, the motivation of teachers. Motivation. Now, I want to also find out. First, it talks about some pertinent issues in the curriculum. Do we find that in the secondary school level where yeah, we can I, have agriculture? I, children be able to do painting <laughs> the music aspect is talking about do we have those stuff stuff that no 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 for sure for sure our our 
our sub our subject have remained the same though we have tried to bring the paper out tiger the, stuff. C, the 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 the, 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 history, the same history. history it it, 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 it has almost uh, uh, remained the same that's okay. why i was asking that what type of Cameroonian do we want to create okay for, for instance let me tell you there are some students if i were made the minister of second second education for instance yeah there are some students who don't have their place in the secondary education okay that is that is there are people their children as they are leaving the primary school they're supposed yeah. to, they're supposed to school and to integrate into some job yeah there are some children since in class from two said it's good for boxing this one is not good for to sit here wasting the time because just from the attitude the way they behave you see boxes. you do everything you say, this one is good for box <laughs> okay. do boxing. now do, 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 do for athleticism let, you see last aspect they say that the, 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 the you people focus more on education the certificate part of it Yes, and that is why we have a lot of cacophony around the, the GC. But I grew up; I never saw the GC timetable being changed on a daily basis. Good. Being announced, students tomorrow you write this subject. But the privilege situation, of, yeah, the privilege situation. They say you people, with, the, you with, people, with, you people with the coming, or? no, with the coming of uh, with the coming of uh, the the crisis in the northwest. Okay, in fact, that's where we saw the standard of the, the GC actually collapsing. We okay. already saw it coming. That is. The, yeah. You know, so the crisis was not the, the crisis. The crisis came and, and they sometimes like they just, an yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just, I just on twenty. We sometimes, sometimes we have the impression that we just have the impression because the the, 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 the has never communicated on that. But we have okay. the impression that as some children were just terribly weak. You see in class, okay, terribly weak. But so, at the end of the day, you see them emerging as okay. uh, Thank successful you. candidates. Let me let me come to you. You now, Winston, at the level of the university, you 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 listening to uh, John Niba said what the primary school is doing he comes at the level of secondary school education he said to him that is where before a child leaves primary school to secondary school there was supposed to be some some selection identification of what yeah. Cameroonians can be able to do to fit them into the society that is not done Mr. and then everything is just passable teachers are not being motivated the there is a the, before the, your the, question the comes to an end <laughs> before your question comes to an end my i've been burning to to to, to, to talk, talk to talk yeah now there are so many things that to me are really disturbing the Cameroon educational system okay what uh, my brother just said that he said he didn't want to become a teacher yeah. he is not the only one making that confession there are a lot of them and i believe teaching today because ens or economal is uh, direct recruitment many people tend to go there as a last resort they are not born teachers and that is why you will see people paying money huge huge sums of money millions just to enter into uh, 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 ENS, uh, ENS. Mm -hmm. and then when they come, so what do you expect? He knows very well that my father or whoever I've paid this amount of money, I must do everything to get the amount of money. Or whether I do it, as they always say, if I do it or I don't work at the end, at of, the the end of the month, I will still have my out salary. Of the country, we saw some, six, some of them, six, some of them, six hundred thousand. There are people that are going out. Some of them, you stay for four, five years without a salary. When they give you that salary, as they call it, go low. Mm -hmm. Most of go them take the money as they call it. Njangi, let me put it that way. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, it is a whole uh, uh, money to start their business somewhere else. The country or the policy, the government policy with respect to our education, if it comes to teachers, I want to believe, to me, a good teacher, if I have to recruit a teacher, I will not take one that, can, that probably paid money to go to ENS, to I be directly recruited. I will take the person that went to ENS as private as a private student that to me is somebody who actually had that urge to be a teacher not some actually will go write the concur and pass some will go to most of the ministries you go into offices you see them seated there but those are trained teachers what are they doing in an office and that is a fact and even in the state that universities you still see you go secondary school teachers being appointed in positions like, what are like, they doing in like, the universities like when the, the we have things, to be, do, also, things, also, things to be done in class that that is the policy we are talking of eh? that is it well, what is a secondary school teacher trained secondary school teacher doing in the ministry doing in an office carrying five from one port, uh, one door to another what are they doing there the it is not service. which attachment are they teaching there did they go to the ENS to go and carry files we should be serious we should be serious you don't spend money they can't the government is spending money to train those teachers look at the the the, 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 the exam this year they like uh, yeah, most of the uh, ENS is five the number of places five mm -hmm. Uh, from, the, from the majority the, from yeah from 50 it has dropped to five mm -hmm. seven ten telling you that you, you think the five people they are paying how much at school fees fifty thousand fifty thousand cannot train them a year 
the government is spending huge sums of money. I congratulate the government for that, spending money to train teachers. But after that joke. training, the teachers they go. You go to Ministry of Transport. You see secondary school teachers. You go to the Ministry of uh, I, I don't commerce. know commerce. You see secondary school teachers carrying files and signing papers. I, I don't know that you, you went to ENS. You did history. To come out to now, be a history teacher, you are now carrying so Both of the you office. are lecturers <laughs> in our state, uh, in, in our universities. When these students leave primary, they go to secondary. They leave secondary, they come to you people. I, I want to believe uh, in secondary schools, we have what we call a guidance and counseling. Mm -hmm. But before secondary school, I don't know, back in the days, when I was in primary school, we had that idea that after a common entrance, those who passed in list A, list a. they will go to a government, a lycée or a general education. General education. Those who passed in list B is for technical education. I don't know where they heard that notion came from. Stigmatizing people. Where heard that notion came from? That this person had to be. But they never stop those who pass in list A from doing technical. No, it is not. Nobody stop them. It is just a psychological thinking that people will move away from technical education and they are driving into general education. I have not said general education. This, uh, good afternoon. A question for Dr. Winsley. I'm going to uh, how can uh, your institution instead assist small po processor to ensure quality product? That question Maybe is coming you from, from uh, uh, Ngwasiri. Ngwasiri. Dr. Ngwasiri Pride Dasi. Ah, oh, you is a doctor. Yes, ah, sorry, a doctor. I did not mention that he's a doctor. Yeah, doctor. I thank you very much. Very my <laughs> <laughs> when it comes thank you very much, Dr. Ngwasiri, for that question. Now, when we come back to Ensai, yes. Ensai, the National School of Agro Industrial Sciences, based in the University of, based in Gandhari, a school, a mother school in, from the University of Gandhari. Yes. Our main objective, as I said in my opening statement, yes. the main it's, objective it's is to train engineers, engineers. Okay. in the agro food processing Good. sector. One. Now, that agro, agro food, you have agro food processing, you have industrial maintenance and production, we have yeah. industrial chemistry and environmental engineering. Okay. Now, yeah. we have other aspects that are done in this school. Well, now, let's, let's come. To, let's come. I want to answer yes. the question. Yes, that's where I'm going. Yes. Now, small, you see, uh, uh, what I, what can I say? Cameroon can never develop if we still remain on subsistence agriculture, and if we can we are not no. able to transform our agricultural products into finished goods. That, yes. That For this country level. to develop, first they must develop the agriculture. We move from subsistence farming to industrial farming, Good. and even with the subsistence farming, what we have. We need to transform. Now, if you go to this trade fair that is lo taking lo on, lo logically, on now, yeah, let, me, let me say something. Yes. Logically, you are, you, are, you are saying that you people cannot help them because your principal mission is to train. I'm coming. I'm coming. Our principal <laughs> mission is to train. It I'm not saying we are not It's helping. not establishing. No, we have a whole service. A service for corporation. For continuity after training. We are training engineers. When somebody graduates, when somebody graduates, the person is with the able, knowledge, with the knowledge, and acquired. he doesn't have that financial capability. My brother, <laughs> financial capability. It depends from what. It depends from you where you want to start. The, the person is unable Mr. to start Abel, from a minimum. Can I talk? You people, you people train. Yes. My, 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 because you want us to give finance. <laughs> you ask a question. Now, yeah? okay, that, okay. What type of a Cameroonians we need? For us to benefit from our educational no, not we need one I? type of government does the government want see, because the government, see, the government. Defines, one of the yeah. things one, one of the things one of the things that we lack one of the things that we lack that young entrepreneurs will probably lack is aid formation okay one of the things is information okay we you, have, you, you can help them on that domain we have it is not act, it is not only inside but we have information systems where people can get valuable information on how they can be helped if they need help okay our it is not only inside that is involved in transformation i'm betting you yeah we have local producers if i have to answer the question of dr but, but, Wasiri, no, you, you, you have, have already done it i have not done it you have already I've done it, done it. <laughs> hold on we have local <laughs> producers right we have local producers now we have our own students that are finished and are producing in the market 
We have trade backs already in the market. We have the Logrange. Okay, Le which market? Le, apart, Le, from, apart from what they organize there, I want to drink. Let me use maybe. Mango. Uh, watermelon. No, watermelon. Mango. Wine. In, mango. Down there is mango. Okay, mango. Yes. Oh, watermelon wine. Oh, pineapple Mr. wine. Mr. it's just that we are, we are on the microphone. I actually came with a gift from you. This is uh, dried mango from that, madame. That's one. Thank you. This is dried mango from madame. Uh, it's talking, it's talking <laughs> with example. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Let, me, let me find out something. No, let, us, let us try to organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. that, this is not a problem. After this, work, because that is a problem. Where can we have this dried mango? That is the problem. Can you I don't see them in the You are not talking. I said there is information, the lack of information. You don't you won't allow me to talk. Who is supposed to inform us? Now people need to know how to look for information. I uh, came across the African for uh, business information bank. Yeah, we really have this this, this now this, if you this, go you go those those, 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 are, those, are, those are those are organs yeah those are organs okay yeah, the yeah, founder yeah, the founder and ceo is a cameroonian yeah. the african yeah. business I'm, 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 the founder understand and ceo understand is you. a cameroonian let, let, you listen, can listen yes let's understand ourselves mm -hmm. you are what we are trying to say is that when the primary education sent to the secondary the secondary sent to you you do the finishing for them to become professionals. La creme de cre la yes. And the creme professionals de la now, since you have a, 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 a mission, is to train. But if they come, you can help them, like short term loan in banks and other. I'm issues. in school, I'm not a financing organ. Good, I understand. The yes. banks can I, I, I've got to them you. Up from I've there. got to you. That is I, why I, I'm I, talking I, about. I, 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 yes, I, I, I understand you. An information I understand bank. you. Mm -hmm. That is why I come back now. We are moving out of this. We are moving. Yes, I'm not. Okay. I'm still flying. I'm not being landed. You have no, to move. No, we well, understand. <laughs> I, we, 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 let us move out of this and let us do something concrete. Because the problems that we have, like for example, we have just talked about the GC. You, you, you see what you said. Something? I want to say okay, something. Okay, so say it. Let me just say this. Yeah, in thirty seconds. Yes, 30, 30, 31. Now you <laughs> see the the educational policy of this country now let me talk something general yes. the educational policy of the country to me is very poor if we can if this country can actually sit we have a road bump we are talking about emergence 2035 yes. what do we envisage in 2035 what type of economy do, do uh, uh, those cameroon actually envisage in 2035 mm -hmm. probably we need roads. no by 2035 not in by 2025, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, need roads. we need roads. We need energy. Mm -hmm. We need water. We need this. Now, what does it take to produce energy? What does it take to produce roads? And that is how you orientate your educational Education. system. Good. I need roads. What, who do I need to build roads? It is very, very, very uh, and you train the heartbreaking to you that need. since independence, Cameroon, can, the Wuri Bridge, we are looking for foreign people to come and build Wuri Bridge. Well, we By the way, doing Cameroon Pipeline, Chad Cameroon Pipeline, we are looking for foreigners to come and do the Chad Cameroon Pipeline. We, we, when, when, when you identify a long-term project, you orientate your educational system to suit that project. I need people who can build roads. What does it take? I train teachers in the, the different training schools, mm -hmm. and they go train the students. When the students come out, I employ them to build these roads. Okay. If we cannot do that, then that emergence will Don't change from 2 to 30, 35. Eber, yes. <laughs> I will be very brief to explain this notion of collective promotion, okay. of which uh, our brother here from the SAF blamed the... No, a teacher. No, we are not into politics. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to say, say, I, 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 I said wonder. it earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah more. <laughs> the poor quality products that they receive in secondary school on collective promotion. Now, let me try to explain what we mean by collective promotion at the base, which many teachers use it in the wrong way. Collective promotion simply means that, and it used to even work well when we still had sequences. There, there are supposed to be six sequences in a level. The basic education is divided into three levels. You have level one, level two, and level three. Level one is class one and two. Level two is class three and four, and level three is class five and six. Now, in the recent of it, where they apply collective promotion, a child was normally supposed to be awarded a certificate to graduate from one level to another. It means that what? It is of no use making a child to repeat class one because that child has to present 12 sequences and they judge the child on 12. 
you present six sequences in class one and you finish your other six in class two mm -hmm. but if you cannot pass class two you don't leave that level to go to another level that is the level that one. is collective promotion if you now pass class two and go to class three even if you fail class three they push you to class four when you complete but you cannot pass class four you don't leave that level you continue in class one until where you have that but level. There's people who that just means that they could have actually been given certificates per level to a child that was the notion of collective promotion and if it was being applied like that sir you will not cry foul because children will not leave the primary school until they have succeeded in a level before going to another okay now, all of now the yes the problem another problem with education in cameroon is that many cameroonians like those who pass in list b or even some of them that we dictate like you were saying you dictate that this child is good in this this child is good to use the hands to realize this which is what we are even in for you don't have schools government schools that are affordable where parents can send this the whole, the whole of one, the one day we have only let, one please technical let me, let me name school. certain things so we're very far a child who wishes to be a hairdresser to mm -hmm. which government school can that child go this pedicure manicure where do the child go mm -hmm. children who are doing plumbing children who want to do shoe making is there a government school for them That's president paul bia came out and asked us to go to the farm ask us to do wedding ask us to go into hairdressing because those things make children to Mr. Neighbor, we are doing the same thing on government mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but since then no action has followed we are kind the same thing so don't them for that that is why I, I don't that know is why earlier said you should not be you blaming parents. You made yourself to be the only parent on earth. No, <laughs> I am here. Did I call the name of any parent? No, that is why I said okay. I'm going to hit the name. Let us, let us round up with the notion of uh, having certificates that we cannot uh, demand them or we, 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 we output. What can we do so that our children should not have the notion that examinations and certificate makes you more educated and makes you better place in the society? I just wish to plead and ask myself or ask this panel this question first. <laughs> when we were growing up, we used to have SAR SMs that would train one, two years in a technical field. Yeah. Where are all where have they all gone to? Where are the SAR SMs? Where are the uh, 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 those vocational exist? colleges? They still exist where in bushes. We have a minister too, my who is in charge of all those. They, where How where, where are all where are all those vocational S colleges? Where have they gone to? Since when since if we don't professionalize our education, we will continue to train people yes. who cannot do yes, anything. Yes. And the professionalization we must start the secondary. Is that from secondary? Days. You train you the children and train that child to, to follow a certain field. Secondary education is to be yeah, the second continue. Yeah, for sure. That's what I know. The Cameroon government from implementing driving as from form three right up to form five. You come out with your driving license. At least you are a driver. You can actually render something. Why continue in school? Because we know that from form three, at least the children can train and they have a driving license. They can be responsible. What is stopping? wrong government from implementing things like that that can make children independent without necessarily looking at the public service okay for sure and that's why yes. you see that as we get them from primary school we train the way we, we can they go to the university you see in the history department three thousand four thousand <laughs> uh, you are doing history and learning russian to revolution yeah. what the hell has russia what can russia revolution do in the development of france revolution good you go to the story department he, he he did what that issue in Germany. you go to philosophy when you go to engineering in, in general look at how people do you know, they are talking here about civil engineering <laughs> people build houses they spend a lot of money only for council officials to come and break it down again because civil engineering never planned the town well yeah, where yeah. are those engineers so, that want so i think Everybody that i think that history and geography the rate at which the rate at which Camonians are going to the university is it, is larger than the rate of uh, how americans are going to the university eh? <laughs> proportionally spoken you see you see we think that we we should leave from school go to single secondary school that's how the parents have had in the, they have in their, in their mind we must leave from school go to single school after secondary school university will know ah what in 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 the western world those who would go to university are what we call la creme de la creme okay. the best put up so you start shifting people from a certain level only the and specializing them and specializing them yeah. only one, the one of the things put up to to them. to achieve that uh, the best if as you are seeing is to professionalize from secondary school yeah. That's what you professionalize from secondary school right sure. and you equipped the private sector because one thing in cameroon out of education one thing in cameroon 
no country can develop with the government being the sole employer for sure okay, no country can it. develop the private sector has to be empowered and it is that private sector that gives the economy by the economic backbone of a country thank you we have some uh, courses we have one 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 that is sponsored by private private companies yes, the last sponsored thing. in universities yes the the last thing i wish students secondary school university orientate yourself in doing something that is professional okay i am proud of my products thank you sure. that are trained those that are training uh, i'm proud of them we are going to continue the discussion we, co we keep on building the nation joining me in the studio is my own uh, jean marie uh anaba uh greetings to you jean marie thank you uh wow uh, thank you for coming in jean marie uh J'espère que le Cameroun est debout. Oui, le Cameroun est très très debout. Euh, je voulais d'abord vous rassurer qu'il se porte bien à l'heure où je vous parle. C'est vrai que dans les régions du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest, ça, ça il y a des problèmes là-bas. Donc le Cameroun n'est pas totalement debout. Nous devons faire l'effort. Ok. Up next is Biomatrix Politique avec Jacques-Marie Anneva. Listeners, don't move a muscle. Stay blessed and happy weekend to you all.